The project began when I was in a cafe in Edmonton, uh, Alberta, and there was an article in the Globe and Mail about a village in northern Spain that was depopulated. And it really piqued my interest, and uh, I started to do some research. The remit that I'd given myself was to respond in poetry and prose to the demographic phenomenon of dying villages in Europe. So I traveled to northern Spain, southern Italy, Germany, France, Bulgaria, and to Russia, visiting dying villages. And I wrote a book in another world among Europe's dying villages. Tom said, well, I've written this book about dying villages. Could we do something to do with a sort of dichotomy of the village and the road? And I thought that sounds great for like music, you know, of like the, the close village and the, the expanse of the road and things like that. Because I love using just sounds of music, especially on the harp, not tunes necessarily, but textures and chords. It's a great instrument for putting a context to words. And uh, we decided to work on Village and the Road together, which is the first time I've really done with a lot of musicians doing sort of music collaboratively for a piece. The kernels of this idea were very early on with us, actually, as a group playing together. And it involved a lot of talking about it, reading through it, um, suggesting ideas and seeing what kind of worked, how it made us feel, what it kind of provoked. It was quite intense. Um, and sometimes, you, you know, people can have quite strong different ideas about what you should do with particular bits. So actually, I think it was very collaborative because everyone's ideas had to adjust to fit with other people's viewpoints. And so you end up with something that you've all really done together. The piece began as just here are the words and there's the music, and I had a stand, a lectern, and a folder. And people liked it, but everybody felt, oh, this could be developed. Matthew definitely helped pull that out and brought the kind of suggestions of, I guess, stagecraft, really, to it. Somebody being able to kind of have a vision of being like, what you've got here, you've got this really, really strong story, you've got beautiful music, let's really get them to work with each other. What I've done really is got the whole company to move, if you like, and to kind of uh, hopefully evoke some of the, the, the meaning of the piece and the places, uh, the situations which are described in the piece. We've kind of developed the piece sporadically over the last three years really and through that process one of the most interesting things that's happened almost organically is that Tom felt that he needed to learn the script. He becomes more of a kind of character, if you like, a kind of storytelling bard. I play a narrator, but I also play a number of roles, a kind of preacher type character. I play a spurned lover. I play somebody who's affected by alcohol in the, in the, in the village. And I see the gallery agreement often are like, they're like a chorus like a Greek chorus responding to me and scaring me at times. It's fascinating trying to be invisible in plain sight and also trying to be quite fluid so actually at times you are very present and then just disappear while you're still sitting in the same chair in the same corner of, of the stage. It's definitely out of our comfort zones at times, especially the shouting bits. But I think because I am a performer and have been for a number of years and singer, um, that gives you the confidence to do it. Speaking the lines is, is a really different thing, you know, but Matthew Zajet has been fantastic at coaching us. It's not like I'm working with completely inexperienced people at all. They're very experienced, uh, but at the same time, they're not actors. And uh, so, it's really more to do with exploiting what's there, potentially. It's a performance which has a lot of integrity, you know, there's, there's a lot of honesty about it. You know, I don't think anyone's trying to kind of pretend to be something they're not. And, and it's very important that the musicians are actually able to deliver the music, which is so sort of central to the whole piece. I mean, the text and the music are what this is all about. 
It evokes a kind of beauty of worlds which we're in danger of completely losing. There are specific stories and specific places, but because it moves around the world and also evokes the refugee crisis quite powerfully, um, it, it's, it's very much of now. It's a very contemporary kind of piece. I recall the sole inhabitant of a Russian village who gestured me furiously across her threshold, lest anything untoward happened, and I too would go missing. You can take it as deeply as you kind of, as deeply as you need, I guess. Um, audiences can come and just really enjoy it and just absorb it, you know, and it'd be a beautiful experience for them. But at the same time, you can really get into the kind of nuts and bolts of it. And it's just so nice to be getting to bring it out to theatres and play in front of folk. And it's like, oh yeah, that's why, that's why we do that again, you know. It's really, really lovely doing this thing. <laughs>